Good morning, everybody. I think we're just about ready to start. So it's just wonderful to see you all here today. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Karen Harrison. I'm the Endocrine Project Awareness Manager for ALD Life. I'm also a carrier of ALD and have two affected sons. So what, what have we been up to for the last kind of couple of years since we've had one of these weekends? Quite a lot, actually. So, to begin with, following on from the Endocrine Awareness Project, um, this continues to be obviously a very, very important um, project. And we're moving forward with great strides. We've recently, um, the Society of Endocrinology, which is BSE, have agreed to put into their Addison's information leaflet that ALD is a cause of Addison's. They've also included that males without autoimmune cause Addison's should be tested for very long chain fatty acids, which is a huge step forward. We also have some diagnostic study research plans. We did a very small study at Addenbrooke's um, and a 50% failure rate was found to test males with no cause Addison's disease for ALD, which is obviously a very worrying statistic. We, Sarah and I recently attended a um, adrenal meeting hosted by Professor Hindmarsh. And we'd, about a year ago, we'd attended to another meeting and Professor Hindmarsh had asked us <coughs> to hand out some, or leave out some of our leaflets. Um, there was a rather inflammatory article followed um, from the Addison's group in the newsletter. Um, and Professor Hindmarsh just felt it was very important to point out at his meeting that our information is important, it's factually correct, and we're not scaremongering anyone. So we're a step forward towards our goal. We know that from feedback that we have created a talking point amongst endocrinologists and literature changes such as the Society of Endocrinology and public announcements confirming our case bring us a step closer to our goal. So the next thing we would like to do is embed this into NHS protocol and ensure that all males with Addison's disease who haven't got autoimmune Addison's disease are tested for ALD and therefore get timely treatment. So our next big project is newborn screening. Um, obviously, the, our friends in the United States have really taken this to the fore um, and have done very, very well in getting it um, actually passed. So where are we at? So we've completed the economic survey and the, it basically shows that there is a benefit to the NHS for ALD to be screened for at birth. We had an excellent meeting with Anne Mackey, who's the chair of the Newborn Screening Committee. And Sarah and I went thinking that we were going to come away with a very long list of points that we had to sort of brush up on and more information. And actually, she was very pleased with all the information that we had. So she actually said that we were basically ready to go for rapid review, which, of course, in the NHS, rapid <laughs> <laughs> may not be quite as rapid as we would like. Um, so we've been invited to pilot the um, National Screening Committee's new open application process. And so our outline plan will actually um, go in in June. We actually have a, a round table this afternoon, round table meeting with the professionals here to just sort of look at what we've, we've got down and make sure that it's the best it possibly can be. We would also like to thank Alice Bessie, Jim Chilcott, Leila Cornes, Annie Brown and Pat Roberts from the PANS group for their help in getting us to this stage. And we really do need to mention um, Dr. Jim Bonham and Professor Colin Stewart, whose advice has been absolutely invaluable. Mm -hmm. 
So this is where we see ALD life coming to the fore in that we really are, we've got expertise in the condition. So between our beneficiary staff, professionals, volunteers, ALD life has a wealth of experience to offer in all aspects of living with ALD and AMN. As well as functioning as a support charity for those with the ALD gene. We are well on the way to becoming the go-to organisation in the UK for anyone wanting to find out more. And the NHS is including us more and more in their services and for development for ALD and AMN. So speaker opportunities. I recently spoke at a meeting for uh, students who were already qualified doctors but they were doing add-ons to their their study at the Imperial College and we're actively looking for more opportunities to present. I'm also speaking at the Cambridge Rare Disease Summit and at the Royal College of Medicine. So we've been travelling all over the place to try to raise awareness at a conference of endocrinology, neurology, genetics, rare disease, you name it. It's costing us a fortune in sweets because it's a well-known lure for these lovely doctors. If you have sweets on your table, they all come to see you. <laughs> I also attended uh, the ALD clinic in Bristol recently, which really turned out to be a very good day. Um, so I met and chatted with pa patients and parents, um, some who I've known for a very long time, and others who I met for the first time. And I think they all said it added to the day just to have a bit more information around. So our beneficiary support, on average we get three requests for information and support per week, which really is quite a number considering that yeah, it's a rare disease. Our beneficiary support is definitely our proudest achievement and the thanks that we receive are our constant inspiration to do better and better and to carry on supporting our patients. We've hosted 180 of our AL, at our ALD family weekends and events and given over 100 financial support grants. We actually give support grants all over the world. We don't just give them to those in the UK. We've also worked with other charities such as Mind and Trust to help support patients abroad. So we finally finished our information standard accredited practical information leaflets last year. They took a very long time to do. Um, there are hard copies around if anyone would like to take one with them. We have shortly got to review these all over again. Um, so if you could please look out for emails for requests of help just so that you could read through them, check that we haven't missed anything off, that we're actually telling you what you think you need to know. The information standard accreditation is absolutely so important. It basically means that all the information that we give out is rec can be recognised by the NHS because it's been medically endorsed and it's factual patient information which can be trusted. So with all this information, our next big step would be to start developing care pathways um, to ensure that every ALD and AMN patient in the UK is treated according to best practice. Obviously, at the moment, there isn't actually a care pathway, so a lot of the time it depends which doctor you see as to which pathway you follow. We would ideally like to see everyone following the absolute best pathway no matter whether you live in the north of England, south of England, Scotland, wherever. <coughs> so another very big thing that has happened this year is that we, um, and some of you may already know this, that we've recently been awarded a Cabinet Office Local Sustainability Grant Fund grant of £100,000. This money is specifically to ensure we can continue to grow and support you, our beneficiaries, to the highest possible standards. 
We were awarded the highest possible amount and would like to extend huge thanks to Charles Jardine, who's our business advisor specifically for this project. Charles was with us at yesterday's dinner and has a wealth of experience in helping small charities. He is guiding us carefully and very patiently through this process and tailoring the business planning jargon to the ways of our unique little charity. So part of the grant rules were that we needed to expand the business. So we're using some of the money to expand the business and open a shop in Brighton, which is very exciting. Sorry. So basically, the, because the grant rules say that we have to expand, we've had to change the way that we actually do things within our day-to-day -day running and how we apply for funding. So this has meant massive changes in our day-to-day -day work and we really do have to say thank you to Lydia for putting up with Sarah and I. She's trying to teach us all the fundraising jargon of outputs, outcomes, inputs, you name it. And it's, Lydia does have to be very patient and explain it several times to Sarah and I. We will get there in the end, I promise, Lydia. <laughs> so apart from opening the new Brighton shop, we're also changing our Sydenham shop into an upcycling project where we'll be able to carry on our work of upcycling and reusing shop donations into new items to sell. Another thing that's come out is that we've actually been hiding our light. We don't tell people how good we are, how much we do. We know how much we do, but we need to tell everybody else what we do and how well we do it. So we really do need to show people that we can do this work. So we're going to start promoting what we do and how we help people a lot more and asking you to share this with your contacts, your colleagues, your neighbours. We're going to make our be website the best it can be. We're going to develop relationships with all the lovely people that give us money so that they want to keep giving us more and more. And we're going to make giving us irresistible to new donors and funders. We hope. <laughs> now, most importantly, we're going to develop in the next few weeks, a survey for our beneficiaries to ensure that we tailor our services to your needs. What we think you need, hopefully, is what you need, but we also need you to tell us if there's anything else that you would like us to be doing for you. So please look out for the emails, please fill in the surveys. They won't be really long, but they'll be really, really important. Remember that ALD Life is your charity and we want, you, we want you to do what you want us to do. So what can you do? There's quite a lot of things that you could do. So we really do need your support more than ever now. You may think, oh, well, they've got the sustainability grant, they're going to be, you know, the business is going to be running better. But we do still need help and input from other people. So what you can do is you can promote our social media. You can tweet, you can share our Facebook posts, you can like Facebook posts, comment on them. Basically, the more you do that, the more ALD life appears in Twitter feeds, appears in Facebook feeds, and that's all very good for raising awareness of the charity. We also need you to continue to raise money for us in any way you possibly can. For example, how many of you in this room use the easy fundraising tool to do your online shopping? Any hands? Oh, I can see one. Two. I do. <laughs> And it's amazing how much money it actually can accrue. And it's actually quite exciting when it says that, you know, you're, whatever you bought from next has just given a pound to ALG Life. So it really is very, very easy. If you do want to start doing it, if you speak to Lydia, it's very easy to set up and she can go through it with you if you need to. You could take a collection pot, just have it on the side, put your spare change in there. 
You could respond to our email requests. Um, that can be about sort of um, asking if a family needs support or asking questions that you, living with the condition, might have some innovative ways of dealing with what that family is going through at that time. And of course, raising awareness of the condition, talk to people, hand out leaflets, tell them about ALD, and then together we can raise so much more awareness <laughs> of the condition. So these are just a few slides of things that people have been doing. This was a dress down day at, um, at a school. They had a huge amount of fun. We were given some Easter eggs. Now, who fancies this one? <laughs> <laughs> Professor Colin, you're smiling. <laughs> so, thank you for listening, and I will hand you over to Professor Colin Stewart now, who's going to run you through the speakers and the order of the day. Thank you.